Hey folks, in today's video, I wanna talk you through a three-step plan on how to work out which Prime you should buy next. Before we get started, please jump over to mattgranger.com and you can see a huge archive of free photography tutorials and instruction waiting for you to discover it. There's also all of my download series and if you sign up to the mailing list, you'll get my free guide to improving your portraiture. So this set may look familiar. I just stopped off at Tony and Chelsea Northrop's place to record some stuff together and they graciously allowed me to film here. Make sure you check out their channel. It's one of my favorites on YouTube. Today I wanted to talk to you specifically about prime lenses and how you should go about choosing your next one. So first off, there's a lot of reasons why people love prime lenses. For you know this kind of effect where you're getting a slightly soft background, primes generally speaking you can get a faster f-stop which means a shallower depth of field more light lots of benefits that go along with those things another thing is they are often smaller they're often cheaper but it's not always the case for example something like the Otis's they're more expensive and a lot bigger and heavier it just depends on what features you're needing to get from your overall lens the other thing is they can be sharper than uh, zoom lenses, but it, I want to encourage people not to just take the simple, simplistic view on things that primes are always sharper than zooms because it's just not the case anymore. With modern technology, a lot of the lenses, like a good 70 to 200, multiple points through that range will be just as sharp as the equivalent prime. So don't get hung up on sharpness specifically, but there are those other reasons I mentioned why primes are great for a lot of people. So having said all of that, it's really easy to get tied up in rhetoric or other people's opinion of, oh, you shoot street, so a 35 is good, or you shoot uh, portrait, so an 85 is going to be good. So I really want to go through a simple three-step process here that will help you make it clear what's going to be useful to you. There's no point buying a classic portrait lens if it never gets used, even if you are a portrait photographer. So let's work out what will actually work for you. So first step, I want you to go into your editing software and look at your metadata and see what you tend to be shooting with. Let me just jump in and I'll show you how I do it in Lightroom. So first step, I want you to think about how you think you're going to be using the lens. So let's take an example of me and I want it for travel. So then I want you to jump into a folder or a, you know, a series of folders in your editing software and pull up a recent trip that's you know the kind of thing that you're going to be shooting pull up the EXIF data in the shooting info, and let's say you were shooting mostly with the 24 to 70, you can pull it up there and it'll actually show you which of the different focal lengths to the millimeter you tended to use the most. Okay, so having done that, that's a really handy start from the beginning. You might find, okay, so I traveled with three lenses, but I tended to use around 20, around 50, and around 300 were the focal lengths that I was using the most. Then, and this is a critical one that I think a lot of people overlook, is actually look at your rate of keepers. So how I like to do that, I go through and give a star rating, maybe use a pick or a flag or however you like to do it, but filter by that so you're only looking at a previous trip or a previous event or wedding or whatever it is you're looking to buy for, and only look at the ones that you decided were fantastic shots at the end of the day. Then again, look at them by the metadata and how many shots you took with each one. For example, I found that I shot a whole bunch of stuff with, say, my 70 to 200 with a teleconverter, so right out at 340, but the strike rate was a lot lower than I was getting with, say, down at 16 mil. You know, the overall number may have been similar, but my overall rate of keepers was much higher at the wide angle. So once you've got that, you know what focal lengths are going to work for you and the kind of shots that in the past have worked well that would be beneficial if you had a faster f-stop, say going from your f4 zoom to a 1A to a 1.4 prime. Then I want you to sit down and make a list of what are the features or attributes you actually need and crucially, your budget. We've already determined what's going to work for you. So next, it's what are your options? So let's say, do you need it to be uh, autofocus or is manual okay? That's gonna se separate the price out a whole lot. Then you need to really get clear on what your budget is. You don't want to spend every cent that you have, but if you say, okay, I have 100, 200, 500, 1000 dollars to spend, that's going to help you narrow down. Do you need to be looking at new or used and what different options out there are going to do it for you? So then if we go out and say, okay, I've decided that a 35 is going to work for me. I've decided that uh, manual focus is fine, but I want it to be at least an F1.4. 
and my budget is $800. That's a nice tight group that you're gonna be able to whittle down to just a handful of lenses to then go and look at reviews and work out which one's going to do it for you. And the final piece of advice, so let's make this tip four in a three-part series, is if you possibly can, loan it and test it out for yourself. Whether it's a friend has one and you just take it for a day or two, or you can find a company that will loan lenses and you hire them, it's a great way to do it. You know, you might spend $50 for a high-end lens to get it for a day or two or a weekend, but if you can go out and plan some shoots that are typical for the kind of thing you want to shoot with that lens, you'll get a really good idea if it's going to work for you. And trust me, the amount you pay for that weekend of testing is most likely going to be less than you would lose if you were to buy it and then go to sell it used when you find out that it isn't actually suitable for you. Please let me know your thoughts. Leave us a comment and let me know what different primes you're shooting with, whether you use them exclusively or to complement your zooms and in what situations that can help out other people as well. Thanks again to Tony and Chelsea for letting me shoot here. So easy working in an environment like this with beautiful lighting and stable sound. It's been really fun to collaborate with them. I'll have a link in the caption below, so do make sure you check out their stuff. Thanks everyone, I'll see you soon.